The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com. Eric's Family Barbecue has arrived and is simply the best barbecue in Arizona. Come satisfy your taste buds with meats that are smoked over mesquite wooden sides that are made with fresh ingredients and tons of love. They have the best juiciest brisket, pulled pork, rib sausage, turkey, or everyone's favorite, the Pitmaster Sampler that includes all the meat and four sides, mac and cheese, potato salad, coleslaw, corn, or beans, yum. And for dessert, try some creamy banana pudding. Amazing. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip. You won't be sorry. Dine in or take it to go go to eric's family bbq.com for more info you thought that was funny sickness. you were laughing like a hyena when he said it what the hell is wrong with you good morning everybody hello there welcome to monday this is the morning sickness it's 5 45 my name is john holmberg there's brady there's brett big dick toledo's right here somewhere and uh congratulate the fix is in by the way i don't know if you were paying attention last night i Brady, you've been watching with the Olympics. I know that uh, I know when things are shady, and this one's going to get reviewed all day long. We've known forever Usain Bolt, the fastest man on the planet. There was no question. You looked at him and said, "There's the fastest man on the planet." You'd see that race line up, oh, 100, yeah. 100 meters, it's 109 yards. So no questions. Yesterday, because Usain is out, a new fastest man on the planet would be named. In the 100 meters. There was a Chinese guy in there, and I thought, well, there was my theory that uh, they, they've never won. And he ended up coming in last in the final. But he, he made it to the finals. But the winner, which is still just unbelievable, it's this gi, bald-headed, one of these types. Hey, what's Italy, the problem? Italy gets the fastest man in the world. Never before, my, so I'm like, okay, so at the at the – Barrel of a gun, all these other guys bailed out of this race. There's no possible way Nigeria <laughs> pulled up with a hammy in the middle. Oh, my hamstring. Of course, Nigeria. It was the perfect storm. Of course, Nigeria did. Two Americans were like, we're in it, but we're not quite in it. And the Italian walks away with the championship. I ain't buying it. There's no Two way. Two seconds behind the world What are you record? talking about? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Somehow or another, the 100 meters, which has been running about nine seven eight nine eight for a uh, the world's fast man, a 13 second 70, and nobody even came close to second place. A 13 <laughs> second champion. Congratulations, Italy. <laughs> One guy no hurdled way. accidentally. He forgot it was just a straight sprint. He just did a couple hurdles. hurdles, yeah. Though they put hurdles in a few of their lanes. It's just <laughs> Italy. Had, Italy is not the fastest. No, no, and no. There's the some, conditions were perfect for the Italian <laughs> sprinter. <laughs> right. Too many guys got notes in their cardboard beds that said, I think maybe our friend from Italy should win tomorrow, or you may meet with an unfortunate incident. No way Italy's got the fastest man on the planet. Now, he was born in El Paso. He moved to Italy when he was a baby. But still, I, Brett, you're not a fast people. <laughs> There's just no way. Hey, and Mario Andretti was look, a fast guy. Uh, right, and he had help from a bunch of, uh, you know, An iron Asians, horse. <laughs> ironically. Yeah, the, the Asians and other Italians and people who built things. I'll give you the Da Vinci factor. You guys build stuff. You're yeah, good yeah. at that. But you're not running fast. And, and you know, once they said, oh, he was born in El Paso, I'm like, oh, okay. So then he, his mother was like full Italian. I'm like, no, he's half Italian. There's just no, there's something going on here. Got to run across his, that border there in El Paso. Uh, no, no. See, that's what I thought at first. <laughs> and how come they don't have a track or swim team that is just unbeatable? It's beyond me, the, the Mexicans. But Italy, no. The Catholic. So I'm positive. I'm positive. There's shenanigans going on in the Olympics, more than we'll know. Damn it, the one event I should have watched. You should have watched it. Just watching beach volleyball, that's about it. Oh, that's a good one. And then <laughs> I, I read an article this morning. I saved it, too. It said, uh, and it's just stupid. Like, they're, they they act like this is a problem. Why are uh, some women still wearing skimpy uniforms at the Olympics? Are they being forced to dress this way? This whole uh, don't sexualize the girls in their outfits thing. Seems like they're being made to wear them. They asked the beach volleyball girl, April Ross, they're like, why do you wear the skimpy bottom? She goes, super comfortable. More clothes means more sand can get trapped. So uh, the less we wear, the less sand can get in there. Yeah, I agree. Sand. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. I, think I think you're wearing too much if that's your argument. And, uh, and then they went on and asked her and said, um, 
Well, you don't have to wear it, and, and if it's an advantage to you, why do the men wear big shorts? It's like the men wear big baggy shorts because they got stuff that falls out. Yeah, that's it. I mean, and but they're acting like they're being. Like the article was written as if it's like these girls do this because NBC and the world makes them, and it's just, and it's not sexualizing it. Although it's hot as hell, those bikinis. Oh. A lot of those girls are really not that sexy. It's just the outfit's good, and they're in great shape. Yesterday, I was watching uh, some of the men run. I don't remember this. The dong factor is mighty high in this one. Have you noticed that? And the sprinting? Yeah, with the guys. Like, there's a, there is a new sheen kind of pant the men are wearing, and there's some dong floppage going on that I've never they recognized like before. Well, they can like it all day. Yeah. I'm watching. I'm like, all right, well, evidently the new outfits mean that we can see the corona and the veins and all the stuff of the guys' dongs. I think that's all about the alpha male thing and the sprinting. I'm world. totally fine with that. Yeah. And you don't hear men go, they're sexualizing us. We wish. Their dongs are flopping all over. These dudes are running these Nigerian guys. Like, I would have, I would, like, my article would be like, how come these Nigerians aren't taping it down for the white runners? This is embarrassing because it is alpha male stuff. So, do they want these chicks to just dress like all frumpy, like they're yeah. going to Starbucks and stuff? <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, the, the, in the article, <laughs> in the article, they made a point to say, how come the girls skateboarders, uh, they actually, when they in were baggy giving, clothes, they were given their outfits, asked for men's sizes. And I never understood why skateboarders wear such big clothes. It seems like it would be a mess. It's like the trend. It's but, kind of more of a style thing. Yeah, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's yeah, the yeah. look of the sport. Right. It's the look of the thing. But it's like, we need to calm down. Everybody needs to calm the F down. If those beach volleyball girls want to wear thongs like the divers do because they feel like it's better. And the one lady said, it's because it makes us feel great. I want to look fierce. I want to look good. And I want to play the game. I agree with her. And then the German girl that wears the big leotard for gymnastics said, I feel better. Like So it's just a matter of how you feel. Yeah. If you're able, look, if I had an ass Swimming, like, there's not much of a choice. Right. You wear what? the bikini bottoms. Yeah. Well, or you or could the, wear the suit. Yeah, and a lot of them wear the body suit. They look, outlawed it, then they said, okay, it's okay. If my body looked like any of the people I'm looking at in the Olympics, I'd have no issue thonging up on TV. Hell no. I'd be showing that thing. If I had dongs like a couple of those runners... I have the thinnest pair of neoprene you could ever imagine. You would see, you would see through it. My dong, like you'd see the urethra. It would be so. I'd point it out every once in a while to make it look like I got a tent going. These people are are perfect, and that body doesn't last for more than a few years in your life. They're ridiculous. Show your dong. Show your butthole. Show it all. You're the pristine form of humanity. You are what a human body can achieve with a little work, and even the ugly ones like that. That redheaded uh, beach volleyball player. I Normally, didn't see her. Oh yet. my goodness! You'd never, you'd never double take her face. But the body's <laughs> fantastic, and it's like win for you, accentuate your strengths. It's a, it's a thing. We all do it. We all try to dress or wear something that makes us look better. And if it's a thong that makes you look and feel better, then damn it, go for it. I want to see makes that you too. Appreciate the sport more. Does it? Yeah, it makes me appreciate it does, the hell out like of beach ama- volleyball. Amazing that. Yeah. You know, because John, you've always defended the hot the girls. hot chicks need defending, and now they can uh, compete at a, a superior superior level. That's right. In that wear, <laughs> and make us watch a sport that I normally most wouldn't care would say, about. Oh, she's uncoordinated. All she is is hot. Right. That's a good point. Because most of the time, hot girls don't have many skills. Yeah, and other it's than been that hot. way, like in tennis, Anna Kornikova. Couldn't play the game to save her ass. Lost she, constantly. She knew her bread was buttered, though. But guess who's watching some tennis? But now it's to that level where you've got some more Anna Kornikova-like people competing at different sports. Well, they started to dress them better. Because prior to Anna Kornikova, we didn't know if Chris Everett had that body. We thought maybe, but she dressed like a frumpy old lady. Oh, there's the Netherlands, right? I think, the, yeah. Netherlands. Netherlands is the perfect specimen of white human. <laughs> they are like the way that uh, there's, there's certain Brazil, though, too. there's certain aspects of uh, Nigeria and uh, I forget the other country. You look at the people and you're like, that is the most beautiful form a human can take with that color of skin. It's just beautiful. Netherlands, they make white people pretty, like because most of the time you're looking around, you're like, okay, there's a lot of frumpy English people, and yeah. the Netherlands are like six one. They're just ripped. Men and women. Look at Brazil, What's though. Brazil? Brazil's the winner in the, nothing but ass. in the Bud Olympics. It's, yeah, man, that's solid. All right, Brett, you've you done go. it again. You've done there it again. You go. <laughs> How does he manage? So, so yesterday during the track meet, there's some Greek runner 
who didn't qualify for the women's 100 meters. And I swear she did this on purpose. She walked by the camera where they're interviewing the two top two finalists from the thing, and she looks over her shoulder and then just reaches back and just rips that thing right up her ass and walks away. And it was a perfect Greek butt. Fantastic. So no fastback. I looked her up. I can't, rem- <laughs> I can't remember her name, but I looked her up on – Line and she, all she does is take pictures of her ass. Greek? It. She loves her ass. Greek sprinter. Okay, I might have it in my history. Since I'm not going to make the uh, metal stand, I might as well give him something. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna buy my stuff. <laughs> it was pretty great. Uh, I damn it, I'll have to find it. I don't remember where it is. And this is the problem that uh, you know. Well, you know who ruined that for me yesterday was your friend Studley when he started to talk to me. Where it is? Damn it, I had it right in my hand. A bunch of them are coming up. Oh, there's so many track yeah. athletes. Oh, it's Ben Audaki, S P A N O U D A K I, S P A N O U K I, and she just pulled them right up there, and it was solid. And I'm like, well, there you go. That's hilarious, and it's great. You should be proud of your butt. You should be proud of your body, and men, you should be proud of your great big flop and dongs. And those, there you go. Look at the first picture. Look at that. that thing's ridiculous. It isn't human. But every time she takes a picture, she turns sideways. Like that? And gives like a side butt. Yep, How there you it doing? Is. That's it. <laughs> she loves that thing. I do too. If I had one of those, <laughs> if I had something on my body that was that good, you'd see it in every photo. If it was a knee, there would be a knee next to my face in my uh, high school graduation pictures. <laughs> if I had a hot look at that thing. Ridiculous. That's what it's supposed to look like. None of us try hard enough. That her in her white jeans sitting there. Oh, yeah. I don't even know if she's pretty. <laughs> so call it sexualization. I call it admiring the human form at its greatest, at its peak. There's nothing wrong with admiring the human body. Nothing at all. That and I've been solid a- body. <laughs> Caleb Dressel, you're telling me women aren't texting each other over that dude? Constantly? Oh, yeah. Come on. Let's get, uh, let's get out of this. he's got all the medals. Out of this uh, attitude that it's all about women. I'm, I'm watching that Caleb Dressel, and I'm like, I got to blow that guy. That's like a perfect <laughs> human being. He's ridiculous. And then he starts weeping when he talks to his family because it's he broke down every girl's waist to knee, like right in that area, just turned into a flood. It was a it was a rainforest all across America when Caleb dressed started to cry when his wife said hello to him on that Microsoft Zoom or whatever they were. He said, hi, we're so proud of you. He goes, <laughs> and this beautiful specimen of a man with his dong flopping around starts weeping. I guarantee you, every phone in every household in America with a woman attached to it was texting another friend. It said, I want to rape Caleb Dressel. That's the hottest man I've ever seen in my life. So I this- want to know how his Olympic village right. experience is going right now. Yeah. We're sec- Oh, man. Well, he's got a wife, but in the Point- she's not allowed there. Right. I was just going to say she's not allowed to be there. The pressure's got to be strong. He said he was going to get on a plane and run home. There you go. He says, it's not the Olympics, but I make John Holmberg wear his Mack Weldon's to work because it makes his ass look great. Signed, Trip Reeb. <laughs> and and uh, Kristen downstairs, who can't get nothing. I'm in my I'm in a pair of sweatpants today, and I thought about it. They're not my Macs. But they'll notice, man. Oh, they'll notice. I looked. I'm like, uh, dong's not flopping around. I taped that thing down. <laughs> We we just uh, I don't understand when it became such a bad thing to admire the human body when it looks great, and every track swimming all these most of these athletes look pretty damn good, so admire it. I got no problem with that. Now the weightlifters that's a different story. How did our? Uh, did you see any? I I, I missed her. I caught a none of the weightlifting part, but I caught the uh, discus throwing. That was pretty great. And the one guy you know before his trailer is just up. Uh, Deadlifting, I don't know, a thousand pound. They're ridiculous. And then they throw it out of the arena. How did the trans do in the weightlifting? Do we have any word? See. I didn't yeah. either. She's like fourteen years older than all the rest of them. Some dudes going in there. <laughs> I'm going to beat these little ladies at their own game, and nobody can get mad at it. And then, of course, Simone Biles is all better from her mental health. That's better now because that's what mental health is, and the message that she's sending is. It takes about three or four days to get over any mental health issues you've got when, you're, when your pressure has overwhelmed you from years and years of feeling this pressure. It takes a little less than a week to feel better about that, and now she can compete because she's watching all these replacement girls nothing win medals. Nothing to do about that. Yeah. Nope, nothing to do with the fact that the girl replaced her got a silver medal, and she's like, well, I don't want that. And then now she's got her beam exercise, and she's like, I can win. I'm not going to let this happen, and that Suni Lee is in there too, the one that won the Who's gold. the dominant now? And, well, yeah. And so now Simone's like, hmm. 
I think it comes across as real she's baby. Been in the, uh, she's been cheering him on the right. whole time. Yep. Give her that. But well, I guess it's like, so I got to stay. Yeah, she's now, cured of twisties now? She's totally what? cured of wow. everything, Brett. It's Mental amazing. disorder's been cured enough. All the pressure of the Olympics and all the stuff that's been placed on her. All the people that defended her now look d- dumb because they're like, we broke her. We pushed her to a limit. She couldn't continue. She, I mean, we pushed this girl until she just couldn't function anymore. From, nah, Tuesday, I'm going to jump around on the beam. I'll be fine. So it, is she do- she's doing ridiculous. the floor exercise, is it? Or no, she's is- doing no, the beam. The beam. Right. Yeah, she's yeah. doing the beam. Which, yeah. if you were to, to get over that, that's the one like, you don't want to climb one. back on. <laughs> that's the one I'm like, of all of them, I want to stay a little more grounded. And that's where um, that Jade Carey from Phoenix yeah. tumbled all over the place. Well, that's a tough beam. one. Yeah. Not a, not a lot of people do great on that. But yeah, I just, it's, it's, the, it's the, I'm having, I, to me, it just screams out she was having a rough day. That'll be a huge and quit. ratings. She quit. And people can get mad all they want. She quit. They're getting mad at Michael Che from Saturday Night Live for having a joke contest on his Twitter, and he was uh, about Simone Biles. And he was he wouldn't even joke. Right. People would send him the jokes. He'd tweet them oh, and go, geez. "Oh man!" But he was putting them back was, out, and he's yeah. he's like highlighting a few that were pretty funny. That's made out of ten. One was mentioning Larry Nasser, the yeah. guy who raped all the gymnasts. But again, he's basically saying, "Hey, it's comedy. All things fair, and uh, and hate and comedy and." Now he's up uh, under fire. There, I saw one thing that said, we got to get him off Saturday Night Live. And I'm like, you got one good thing on Saturday Night Live. And it's because he's brave enough to tell these jokes. And you want to you cancel him. Everybody's getting canceled. I watched uh, 16 Candles on AMC yesterday. Right? Brutal. Well, no, it's fantastic. But, but no, I'm talking but about. There's rape. Yep. There's like taking care of a woman who's been passed out. There's attempts to make Bowling. women pass out. Loads of bullying, <laughs> loads of it. There's a class, a hierarchy of class that's well stated. Who can who can do what to who? Uh, My prediction, would, you know, like if in the current situation, about a third of the high school would be dead. Oh yeah, with yeah. all the stuff. Oh that's my going god, on. that well, the way that the modern teenager yes. is, they're so weak that suicide rate would be ninety percent at this John Hughes high yeah. school. Uh, but you know what they cut out of the movie? Remember when uh, Grandpa's looking for Donger? Yeah, and he's on the phone and he's filing a missing persons report. It's a funny line, but they cut it, and he said uh, he's wearing – what's he wearing? He's wearing a, a red argyle sweater, tan slacks, and red shoes. And then the line is, no, he's not retarded. That's the line <laughs> yeah, in the movie. They, they cut, cut that. Oh. But, you know, hey, Fred, there's your Chinaman. Is, yeah, uh, they kept that's that. still in it. They and kept he's... the rape scenes in. They kept the – did we have sex last night? Yeah. Did I enjoy it? I really did. Uh, the one where uh, the prom queen's passed out, and Ted's asking Jake – what do you got? And he goes, I don't know. Carolyn's up there in a the room passed out. I could have her every way I wanted right now if I wanted to. And Ted's like, what are we waiting for? <laughs> like, let's go up and rape that passed out girl. But you got to cut out the R word. No, he's not retarded. It's a great line. Because up on the other end, we'll be like, red argyle sweater, tan pants, red shoe. Is he retarded? <laughs> no, he's not retarded. Hilarious. But they cut out. They keep. Uh, and we're so we're is so. It grandma or grandpa reaching out and grabbing her cans. Oh, they kept it all. That yeah. the R word was the only thing they nailed out of it. You know they had to. They had the the cursing parts. You know if they said anything bad, AMC had to cover it. And they did, like holy turned into holy snikes or something stupid like that. It was dubbed over like they do all that. But the R word just completely cut out. Everything else is okay. Everything the the whole. <laughs> premise of that party where that girl gets so drunk she's uh, vulnerable and jake just passes her off to the nerd and he has at her in the back of that rolls royce and she wakes up fine with it they fall in love they feel well they did they fell in love and that was the key to it but 16 candles is too dangerous for people to watch because of the r word it's a classic but we're so fragile and stupid right now that that movie should never be touched they played it well it it, runs on a regular rotation about every other month i forgot how funny it was I haven't seen it in a long time, but I caught the. It was probably the last half. I've never seen a whole movie in the last ten years. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's the last half of it. I was dying. I'm like this. The Donger was brilliant. He's funnier when you give him the ten or twelve years since I've last seen it. Donger was brilliant. So funny. In love with that giant. Oh, Oh. I'd watch it all over again. (laughs) No, he's not retarded. It's fantastic. But yeah, we we're so wrapped up, and I don't want to see somebody's butt cheeks or. It's a crime to have somebody pretty on my TV, uh, but, but then you get this going on. You get- How about the um, the Reddit note, whether or not I think it's real, from Los Angeles, the person running through the neighborhood, got on the oh, neighborhood yeah. app? Yeah, and can't uh, and asked people who uh, 
who eat meat to close their windows when they're cooking while this person runs through the neighborhood. Because it's making her sick. Because it makes her sick. And I'm not going to the depths of the disturbed nature of eating animals. But if you wouldn't mind in the summer months, if you're going to do that, char your meals while I'm not running. I would put my grill in the front yard and wait for her to run. I'd go by a smoker and smoke a brisket for like 12 hours. (laughs) (laughs) First off, I'd be calculated about it. Be like, all right, I got to see who runs by my house every day. And I am going to have a free meat stand. Right outside, I'm going to be, like it's a marathon, I'm going to be chucking dead lamb, anything I can find, like like an endangered species, I'm going to throw them at her. How dare you write that letter? Yeah, she put it out on one of those next door app things. She's a vegan and everyone else is wrong, and she would appreciate not having to smell charred meat as she ran through the streets. Well, I guess you should move to a place that doesn't have any of that. Like, oh, I don't know, South Sudan. You can run all you want from warlords, and there's no food to smell. Fantastic idea, dummy. Well, she's going to be uh, happier now because she's in California. And in California, they passed new laws um, as far as raising livestock, and it mostly affects the pork industry. Uh-huh. They're wanting um, the standards that they're looking for when you're raising pigs on farms and stuff. They want more uh, area for the pig. Sure. A little more and space. Right now, um, only 4% of the facilities uh, fit that requirement, even in like Des Moines, which is a huge. Right. Well, they just cram them on and there's no so room to walk. Bacon is going to be right now, and there's. <laughs> oh, Brady's worried. There's oh, restaurants no. in California are like our breakfast joints. But like, pri- they don't have that standard. Like, only we're Brady would get up. this news. No one else would have the potential bacon shortage coming Minute from California. You bacon, like, yeah. Oh, my God. America's going to lose its mind. Have you seen America? You don't play with the beer, bacon. Beer and bacon. Don't oh, mess. You don't play with. But I would. I'd place bacon higher than beer by the looks of people, but you're right. Those are the top two. You start playing around with the distribution. Two oh, man. Every couple of months, though, we're getting a different yeah. shortage. It was chicken a little, a little while back, yeah. and now yeah. it's chicken wings, and now it's. Well, they Possibly won't allow bacon. you to serve it. Oh, bacon? like the, the in California, if oh, it's boy. not unless you you know people get bootleg bacon to get it in there. You would the Communist Republic You'd of California. California. They're not going <laughs> to shut that down. Nope. <laughs> not as long as Brady's walking around. <laughs> I'm going to have. He's going to get political for the first time in his life. I'm going to make decisions and call people names. No more living in the middle. Yeah, you have a side there. Whereas Brett and I are sitting there watching hot asses on the Olympics Hell fighting yeah. fighting a good fight. Brady's going to be over there. Making sure pigs have two feet to walk around so he can get his back bacon. Nothing wrong with that. Anyway, yeah, it was a weird weekend, all that. But, man, the Olympics are for hot people. Let them be hot. They're all 18 to 25, prime of their lives, superior athletes. Body is doing things that our bodies can't do. And that's really the only people who are mad. Fat slugs that sit on their couch all day and go, I don't need to be that tight ass. What they're really saying is, my husband doesn't need to see that tight ass. He doesn't need to know this is possible. And so, they're mad at themselves, and they take it out on sexualizing and men and everything. I'm curious to see it. how much of a factor it is in um, the it's European not. countries. It's I guarantee not. you it's not. They have n- n- nude beaches. They're so much more relaxed about sexualization it's, it's, of stuff. You're the one that is sexualizing. I'm watching beach volleyball. Occasionally there's a great ass in that. Guess what? If she wears a pair of uh, Lululemons, I can still see the great ass part. I'm still going to recognize that's a great ass. And this part is of the a, game. It's a you fun game. You're trying to curtail a male to begin with. Right. You could put everyone in uh, skateboard clothing. Yeah. We're we'll going to find, find a way. We all, we all figured out Billie Eilish's cans, and she was dressed in a, in a fumigation tent for about four years. And we're like, I think she's got huge cans. Every guy's like, have you seen when she, she's got big cans under there. We all know. We're looking for it. We're trained to look for it. We're trained to be attracted to you. Stop trying to talk us out of it. The only way you possibly do it is if you mask everyone up. I mean, full, like the wrestlers. Like the Middle East? Wrestlers. We can still see Middle Eastern girls. You know, I think she might, her eyes right, are hot. Right, She's got big cans. <laughs> well, we would do it anyway. You can take uh, Muslims, and I can tell you which ones have nice asses based on that little slit of eyes they've got. That one's got a good ass. I can tell by her forehead. <laughs> she takes care of herself. We are supposed to be attracted to you. Stop it. Yeah, but you don't have to be pigs. Yes, we do. <laughs> or you guys are going to be, unless you, unless you want a bunch of guys who are passive. And what you really want is somebody to grab you and throw you around a little bit when you're attracted to them and you guys have a thing and you want to be you want to be the, the weaker sex. But when it's a guy that doesn't like you or that uh, you're not attracted to, all of a sudden it's sexualization. Stop it. And plus it's your big fat aunt that's ruining everything. 
watching TV and seeing pretty girls and getting mad that her husband likes it. That's yeah. the only reason this is a thing. It's Broadzilla sitting on a couch <laughs> eating <laughs> Susie Q's and just... <laughs> Broadzilla. <laughs> that shouldn't have made me laugh like it did. <laughs> Broadzilla's mad that her husband is like, wow, these girls are wearing kind of skimpy. This is ridiculous. Skimpy. <laughs> These girls are fun. You know what they're doing? They're, pr- they're, pr- they're making a rape culture is what they're doing. Look at you over there, you pervert. I'm writing a letter. Well, finish Fat the Susie Q and then make dinner. <laughs> We've called Karen Fat Linda on this show for 20 years. Fat Linda is real. She writes letters. Every time she can't be something, she gets mad at it and writes a letter how it shouldn't exist. Which Fat is great Linda. because the Olympics uh, is in Paris next. Oh, it's going to be naked. You're not going to stop that. It's going to be naked. <laughs> Good for them. Uh, let's get a wake up song. Start bucking the trend of caring about all these soft ass people that keep getting upset about everything. Pussy generation. Knock it off. We need to stand up to this. Uh, give us a wake up song, a good one. 585 9800, and we will scream it together. It's 98 KU. But wake up! Yeah, I want it. You really, really, really want it? Yes, I really want it. You've been listening to Holmberg's Morning Sickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat, ericsfamilybbq.com.